All right, so this is Autodesk Inventor. Um, I realise this is the worst way to just film a screen, but then at least I can record um, me speaking as well. My laptop's not the fastest, so I'll try to cut out bits when it's slow. But what I thought I'd do is take you through the process of where I, I made um, a roll cage section for my FTX Bonsai. Um, it's just loading, as you can see. Like I said, slightly slow. Um, this is Autodesk Inventor Professional and you can get um, Autodesk Fusion 360, I believe, is free to download from the Autodesk website. So you can see there the part that I've built. Um, this is essentially a two-part assembly. So I made this uh, in one part originally and then I realized, of course, that 3D printing wise, that isn't gonna look, work particularly well. I wanted it actually so you could print the top half here. This half here could be flat on the bed when it prints and just have that piece there sticking up. And then the lower part here was printed that way up. So that part there is flat on the bed. The green part there is flat on the bed there. So the bed's here um, and it can be nice and easy to print in two parts. And then actually I intended to screw those two parts together, but in fact, I just ended up gluing them together. Um, I believe so we'll see how we go but I've done that part and I just thought I'd take you through the very basics of working in some software like this so if you wanted to download and have a go at building something for your RC then you could do exactly that now measurement wise I had to take some key measurements to be able to build this um, such as that part there the key part here was between those two points there was 26 millimeters and the depth that I could go back to make that sort of C shape if you will to hook around the back of the chassis was important. The other thing that was important to take a measurement from was from this point here working up and back so that at the top of the spring plate um, on the back of the suspension of the um, FTX I had that flat spot there to be able to tape it on and you'll see that later in the video when I show you what the 3D print came out like. Okay, so let's just start a new file. Now, when you open um, Inventor, it just looks something like this. Okay, you'll get all this kind of bump here, but it's actually a lot less complicated than it looks. At the top left-hand corner, there's a little um, arrow. Okay, and if you click that, um, then you can come down to some different things. You've got assembly, drawing, part, and presentation. Okay, I always start with a part. Right, you could start with a drawing, but essentially that's drawing things in 2D and then trying to convert. It's actually better for engineering drawing. What we really want to start with is a part. So once you've clicked part, you click part and it will open up into a blank screen. Once you get into this software, um, and I teach this at, um, at a school, so um, there's certain sort of tricks really, I feel, that make it easier for you. And I'll put my five steps to success in the um, description of the video but essentially you've got five steps to be able to build any part and I know that's that should surely make it sound a lot more simple but there's a couple of key things you need to know before you move on to those five steps first thing is if you select by pressing shift all of the work planes on the side here um, and in inventor or fusion if you hold down shift and press the mouse roller in and drag it you can move the screen you can move it by dragging this little box at the top here if you like but I find that's quite restrictive because it's right next to the edge of the screen here which means your mouse hits the edge of the screen and it isn't this easy so if you hold down shift hold down the mouse roller then you can rotate your space so essentially these work planes are pieces of paper floating in midair essentially they are your starting points and you need to think about what you're trying to build before you um, click one to start a sketch. So for the case of the one that I built, I would start in the top plane or the, flat, uh, the, the floor essentially to build up that sort of C-shaped part. So I'll show you how I did that part to begin with. So I click XZ plane. That's literally the first step. So step one, click a plane. Step two, click the sketch icon, all right, to enable you to draw on that work plane. Wow, that was easy, wasn't it? Two steps. Third step, draw something, okay? And in this case, you're drawing a silhouette. So you're trying to create a shape in a silhouette. Oh, this is an important point. Unless you're in um, America, this software always opens in inches. So if you just go to um, da, 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 tools, document settings, and change the units from inch to millimeter. Apply and close, okay? And now I'm in millimeters, so I'll go back to where I was. 
So I'm going to select the rectangle tool to draw this C shape and I'm not going to worry too much about my actual sizes there. I could type the sizes in if I wanted to, um, but I also think that's a bad habit and I'll tell you why when we get to step four. So step three is draw something. So I wanted to draw a C shape and I'm going to create it look out of three uh, rectangles, all right? Now, when I say draw something, you actually want to be drawing a silhouette. So you're drawing a shape that has no internal lines. It makes it much, much easier if you do that. So I'm gonna click the trim tool, and this works um, a little bit like Fruit Ninja, if you remember the app, where you drag the mouse pointer across the parts which you want to trim. So I'm gonna drag it across there, drag it across there, look, chop, chop, and now I've got a C shape. And the mouse roller, by the way, is zoom. So if I roll the mouse roller, wherever I point it, it rolls towards that. And if I double click the mouse roller, it will fill the screen with my shape. Sometimes a little close, but you can just roll the mouse roller out. If you zoom in miles and lose your work, for example, like that, double click the mouse roller and ta-da, it's back. Zoom out a little bit and you can do the next job. The next job then is step four. Step four is to dimension something. So using the dimension tool, I would click between two points, click one point, click two point, and click there. And you can see the number there that it says is 22 point God knows what millimeters. But I said that was gonna be 26. Now if I set that to 26, it might overtake this line here, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna space this distance here first. So if I wanted that wall thickness there to be, I think I did it three millimeters thick, I'm gonna set that to three, and you can either do it by clicking once, clicking twice, or you can just click that main line. But I think it's good habit to do the two clicks. And then I can then set that middle number there just by double clicking it and change it to 26. So now I've got my C shape. There's a three mil wall thickness in 26. The only thing I haven't done is set this wall thickness here. Uh, see what I did there? I missed my second click and it's actually trying to measure this line here again but I've already measured that line. So it's saying that I can't measure it twice, essentially. It's like robots, you don't need to tell them twice, you should only need to tell them once. So anyway, measure that line there again, wall thickness of three. So now I've got my part there. This distance here on the FTX was um, 10 millimeters. So I set that distance there to 10 millimeters. And because my, when I drew the second rectangle, I actually matched it in height to the first, so it's constrained to it, you saw a dotted line appeared from one to the other. Um, it automatically sized the other side too. Okay, that seems like a lot of learning. Let's go back and let's just remember the steps that I've taken to get this far. Step one, I clicked the plane over here that I wanted to use. That's all I did, I just clicked XZ plane. Step two, on the XZ plane, a little icon appeared that was start sketch, I clicked sketch. Step three, I drew the silhouette of the shape that I wanted to create. And I did it in rectangles and I used the trim tool to tidy it up. Step four, I dimensioned everything and that's where I took all those measurements from the FTX chassis. I used a dial caliper, but if you had a very neat, uh, like an engineering ruler or something where you can take decent measurements, that's okay. The other thing to bear in mind when you measure things that you're going to 3D print is often a 3D printer will um, grow the object because of the plastic that comes out the nozzle isn't exactly the size that you print it. Often it grows by about 0.2 of a millimeter. So it's something to think about to give yourself a little bit of tolerance in the fit to make it fit the product. So that will come with skill of your 3D printing. All right, so the last step, step five, is to click on the button up here that says 3D model and I'm gonna extrude my shape. Now, it's nothing will happen originally unless you click the shape sometimes. Sometimes it look, it's already picked out the right shape. Sometimes nothing happens and you have to go and select the profile. So here it says profile one and it's picked it, but sometimes that will be red um, at this point here and there won't be a profile and you just have to click the object and it will select the right area. Options you've got in this one here is to go up above the surface, you can go down below the surface in both directions or in both directions at different distances. The distance thickness I wanted was 10 mil, okay? So that is my five steps and I've made a C shape, right? All you need to do now to continue making stuff, the first step there is to click the work plane or to click the face. 
So from step one, click work plane or face. This time I've got a face to work with, so I'm clicking that face and I'm finding my new sketch button. There you go, create sketch. So I'm gonna click that. My second um, um, step was to click the sketch button. Third step now is to draw circles. So all I need to do is create two circles. Now I can line up my circles if I wanted to, but I could also, on purpose not line them up which will give me freedom of movement okay so I'm not gonna line them up what do I mean by that if I want to stop drawing circles I press escape on the keyboard and I can actually free drag those around from the center button if I'd constrain them to each other they would move together but I might not want to do that and that's again silliness of the software or positives of the software but it's up to you so I'm gonna measure I've done my drawing my um, Fourth step is to measure. And I knew that this distance from here to here was 10 mil, so I want it in the middle, so I want it to be five mil. And I'm gonna go then uh, five mil. I want my um, cage, I did my cage a four mil radius. I might actually make this one a five mil radius, so it's a bit beefier this time. Um, to dimension a circle, you just click, click the circle itself and put a dimension on it. You'll notice that I'm putting all my dimensions outside of the shape. Um, and that becomes important. The more complicated your drawing gets, um, the more measurements you're going to have. And it's going to end up looking really crazy if you don't put your measurements outside. So that's a good habit to get into. Um, I'm going to go 7.5 in from the edge there. No, actually, let's go 5. 5 in from the edge. To change your measurement, you just simply double click. I know I'll be probably going a little bit quick for people who are new to this, but um, if you are, then you can pause the video. So this time I've gone to my step um, five, which was to extrude the shape and nothing's happened look. So what I need to do is click the profiles. It says select profiles. I'm gonna select the one that's furthest away first because the 3D shape might be in front of selecting the one behind. And then I'm gonna select the other one. And then this time I then measured at this point from the back of the FTX chassis up to the shell. So how far it was till it met the shell. And then I minus 10 mil because then the shell's gonna bump a little bit before it hits my sort of bash bar. Um, I can't remember what the measurement was. Let's say it was uh, 45, something like that. Let's go distance of 45. And that's just over here, your distance on the box that appears. Click OK. Brilliant. So now we've got a C shape and a pair of bars. That was my five steps. So funnily enough, to do the next thing, I've got five more steps again. So I click the end, step one, click sketch, step two, and I draw my shape. That's going to be my step three. If you go through the shapes, you'll find lots of useful stuff. The one that's really useful for this part is the slot. So I can hover over the circle look and it will find center. I can move to the other circle, hover on the circle, find center, and I can draw myself a slot shape. I can either wing it or measure it, Let's just wing it. If I wanted to dimension it again, I could come in and I could dimension certain things and tell it, well, I want that to be a radius of five and then it will change the size of that. Um, then my final fifth step, again, is to 3D model extrude. I know I'm going faster now, but this is the point, isn't it? I should be able to just literally follow five steps, five steps, five steps, five steps. Set the four mil distance. You can notice, look, it's only brought um, a funny shape out, it's not brought the center of those circles out. So I'm gonna to need to click those profiles of the circles to make it a solid object. There we go, five steps done. So you can guess therefore, the next part then would be to build the second piece coming down, the tubes and so on. This is where it got slightly more complicated, okay? Um, I actually wanted a D shape coming out of here so it had like that sort of um, roll cage bash bar style to it. If you wanted that to be squared off, the easier way to do would be to come out the side here before I rounded this off. So um, here's another lesson then. Um, you can edit anything you've done. So if I go to extrusion three and the list of things you've done is over here. If I click on um, sketch three, okay, and then on it, look, has appeared a little box that says, what do you want to do with this? First one there is edit sketch. So I can click edit sketch. And I'm going to actually um, make a bit of a mess. Let's make a mess. Because you'll do this and then you'll not know what's happened. So I'm just going to draw uh, another rectangle copying that first one. So I've completely deleted what I did. It's going to throw a wobbler because it's going to say, where has my shape gone that I made 3D? 
So it says it's got an error. So nothing has happened. I've got an error appeared over here. I accepted the error. I then have to just click the extrusion and click edit extrusion and I can re-click my shape look. And now I have, and I'm gonna set it to five actually. Now I have my box section, all right? And that's gonna enable me to draw a circle on the end there and bring it out. Now you've got a few things you could do here to try and make this cage part. How I did it is I started a sketch. I did all of one side and then there's some other things you can mess around with, which is a um, mirror. You can mirror things in the boxes up here on the 3D model. You can mirror things. So I made the full D shape for one side and then I mirrored it to the other side. To make the D shape, all I did was I started a sketch on this side here. That was step one. Step two, select sketch. Step three, draw myself a circle. I'm gonna put in my five distance there and be lazy. So that's my step four done. 3D model extrude. Again, I measured the distance to the chassis. I selected my shape there that I wanted to extrude. And I'm gonna set myself a distance there. So what do we think, like 25, 25 out? Something like that. No, maybe more. How do I edit it? Click extrusion, click edit. And let's go 40 out. Let's make it bigger. All right, so we've now got a funny D shape to build and this was the bit that got a bit more complicated. But um, two of the things you need to learn how to use really to make shapes, you've got essentially making 3D objects here. You've got extrusions, which we've done five steps. You've got a revolution, which is the same five steps, but you need a center axis to revolve it around. Lots of tutorials on YouTube. You've got a sweep tool, which is what I'm gonna give a go now. And you've got a loft tool. A loft tool, you can draw two shapes like that opposite one another, and it will just simply join between the two parts. A sweep tool, I would draw one shape and a line coming out of it, and then the shape will follow that line. All right, so let's try that. So on the side of here, I'm gonna go new sketch. Double click my mouse roller because it's thrown away where I want to be. Find the center, find the center. Should be marked there. No, it's not doing it, let's do it ourselves. Draw a circle, that's my step three. 2.5, set my distance there to five, that should be in the right place, good. Now to make the pathway, to make that circle follow that pathway, I actually don't have a face that I have to click. So I have to go back to my original thing, which is selecting work plane. So on my X, Z plane here, I'm gonna draw a pathway. So I'm gonna click X, Z, step one, step two, click sketch. Step three, I'm gonna draw an, a, um, an arc, but I actually use the spline tool. I like the spline tool because you've got control over the curve. So I start at the point where I want it to be and you click many times to create yourself a really nice curve. And the cool thing is about the spline tool is you can go and edit the curve afterwards. So once I'm happy with it, I click the tick button look and I can move these nodes around and change the depth of my curve. So until I move those nodes around, until I'm happy with the shape of my curve. I'm pretty happy with that, that's good. I'm gonna finish the sketch this time rather than making a 3D shape. So this time then, we're gonna click Sweep Tool. Profile, it's already managed to pick out my profile for me, but if not, I would just click the profile and select Curve to make the profile follow. Ah, it's got an error. And I'll tell you why it's got an error. Is it gonna let me do it? Is it gonna let me do it? It's not. Because my line in 3D is beneath the middle of the circle. Now, some software will allow you to do that, but this software evidently is not happy about it. So we're gonna to have to edit. And I think this is useful to see, you know, the mistakes and the changes. So I'm gonna to go to XZ plane, but this time I'm gonna create a new plane. So on 3D model, I've got a plane here. I can click new plane, but it's gonna be offset from the plane, right? So it's now created look. You can see a yellow line around it and an arrow is saying, where do you want that plane to be? And I, from that plane there, we know my block came up by 10 mil. So I need it offset by five millimeters. Can you see there now, look, I've got a second work plane, which is in the middle of my shape. So that's good, that's what I want. 
So now, just like I click the XZ plane, I've got work plane one over here. And I can rename that if I like, but I'm not bothered. Click new sketch on work plane one. And I've got to create a spline again, just like I did before. Let's see how fast I can get that made. I usually go out straight to begin with. I've had previous software like SolidWorks not like the fact of coming straight out of a circle when doing um, the project, like um, the sweep tool. Right, so now you can see my line is coming perfectly out of the center of my circle. So now my sweep tool should work. So let's see as it picks up. It hasn't picked up the curve. It has picked up the uh, profile. And I had problems with this last time being a pain. It's way easier in SolidWorks, I'll tell you that. Why is it not liking my profile? Path. Aha, it has done it. A few clicks of messing around and it's done it. I'll tell you what I should have done though. I should have had the path going a little bit further. Can you see on the end here, I'm gonna end up with an error. If I go a little bit further, I could then use a fillet tool to round that off. Let's edit that. But that's how I made the D shape. There you go, one D shape going round. You can see my issue on the corner here. All I need to do to edit that is click the plus on the sweep. I can go to my sketch that's my line. Go to my sketch that's my spline and edit the sketch. From the top view, hey, that did go to there, didn't it? Ah, no, it didn't look. Can you see that spline there ended early? So all I wanna do is actually just drag that dot Ah, it's connected. Just delete the connections. You monkey. There we go. The constraints were on that shape, so you could see it had little parts that were attached to it. They wouldn't let me move it. So I'll just click the top on the cube there to go back to a top view. Zoom in, and now I can move that part. I know that was quite complex, that, for a newbie. But, hey ho. Finished my sketch, and it should accept my change. Oh, it threw a wobbler. So again, if there is a wobbler, you'll see the mistake over here, the exclamation mark. If you just click that, I should be able to edit the feature and it tell me the curve again. It should correct itself almost. Let's just try that again. Profile here, curve, few clicks. Disconnect the curve, reconnect the curve. It don't like my curve again. It did this last time, didn't it? There you go, loads of clicks and it's selecting my curve. Ah, it doesn't like the fact. It does not like that fact. Damn you. Worst comes to worst, if it does this and throws an error, I would delete the sweep. Untick consumed features. And then you go back and you've got your sketch here. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's the fact the line crashes into that box there. So I'm just gonna go slightly around it. I think the thing about this software is there's so many variables that sometimes Hey, that feature, aha, when I was doing it, I accidentally look, made another line. Not a line I need, that's what it was. You only need one line for it to follow because it will not double back on itself. Here we go, so now I should be able to do my sweep tool again. It's automatically got the profile now, let's make it select the curve. Mess around with this silly thing and hopefully it will make my curve.
It does not like me. There you go. Oh, honestly, other software is better than this when you do these curves. Anyway, it's there. We've messed a lot. We did it. Then once I've done that, what I can do is I can select that end plate there and I can use a fillet tool. And a fillet tool will just round off the, the edge of that object. And then you can just round that off and neaten that up. So now look, I've got my D shape of the half the object. I need it to be over the other side here. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my plane here, but I don't believe I did that right in the center. How frustrating. So if I select here and select new work plane again, offset from plane, I know that that distance between these two points here was 26, so I know I need to go 13 to find a center. So I've got work plane two, that is my center line essentially. Um, I might need a center line on that work plane, but let's just try it without. And what I want to be doing in here is using the mirror tool. And this is in 3D model mirror. It says features and I can go and select my features that I want to mirror and mirror plane. So I'll select my mirror plane first. That's my mirror plane and my features I want to mirror are yet again, it's throwing a bit of a wobble. Didn't like me. Hello. -ho. Ah, uh, is it about that? No. Mirror individual features. This is what I want. Hey, look, a few clicks and now it's letting me. I wonder whether it's the memory of my computer or something like that. But I've now, look, clicked my two features and I can see over here it's going to try and copy those two features so I don't have to draw them again. Click OK, look, and now I've got my shape. I know that was a fast rush through tour and I know we had some errors there. But you get the point about how to do things it's in those five steps take the five steps sweep tool is a pain like i say sometimes it selects or doesn't this doesn't select um but you need to take some time to practice and um, if you have questions i'll very happily answer them put them in the comments but let's move on to the next step click in the description see the five steps to success give it a go see how far you can get there are many many guides um, on YouTube but that's how far we got now here um, is the 3d printer um, from my friend Matt who's also going to be doing some drifting on the channel um, with his drift RC uh, and this is a time-lapse of his 3d printing I can't go through the process of 3d printed on his printer because I'm not okay with his printer my printer is at work and because of COVID I'm currently not allowed there so this is a short time-lapse of my cage 3d printing and then we'll go to fit it on the car So here are the 3D prints of ABS plastic. I just need to tidy them up and then we'll see how they fit. So on the actual car, the reason I built this part was to go on the back part here. So did I get it measured right? Oh, it's tight. It's a little bit smaller than I imagined. But it's kind of a rear bash bar set up is the plan to sit as low as it can. And then these bars that I printed go like that to make it like a cage sort of style setup. Looks like I was a little bit, now that'll be okay once I get the glue in there. 
So let's get these bits tidied up and we'll see what the setup looks like. Right, so super glue was all dried up, so I'm gonna go for some araldite and just araldite those two points there. Frustratingly, I haven't got a one millimeter drill, so I'm gonna to have to get hold of some of those, um, just so I can drill two tiny little pilot holes. I've managed to get out of all my RC kit some really lovely, you can probably only just see that, tiny weeny little screws, they're gonna screw into there to hold that nice and stiff, but until that point, araldite will have to do and then I'll drill that and screw it up. But what we'll do today is get it all dyed up, get the shell on, and we'll have a look at how it looks. And see, uh, see, I think, you know, you can push the car from there. It just depends on, once that's glued, how much strength that's got in it, if it has a bit of a rear impact. But to be honest, not too much should be hit it from the back, more just for looks. There we go. So if you haven't used Daryl Dyke before, it's a two pack epoxy. So you need a bit of either side of the syringe. If your syringe hasn't glued up, there you go. And then I usually just hold the syringe against the table to stop the pressure while you put the lid back on, but evidently last time I glued it up a little bit. The two parts then need carefully mixing together with something that you're gonna throw away. And the stuff I've got is rapid, so it goes off in about five minutes, but most stuff is just normal araldite goes off in about 20. So you need to be able to leave it still while it does it. Now araldite's quite a, a hard glue in the fact that it's almost to the point of being brittle. So it's not ideal for some scenarios. Ideally this, I should probably use a glue which is gonna melt down the ABS and actually make it one piece of ABS, so to speak. But I think this will do just to hold it when I can drill it and screw it. There we are, I've just put a bit of pressure on that and it's just gluing up nicely. So that is just glued with tape there and tape there and look how strong it is. I'm pretty impressed with that. Nice. Right, so that's all glued up and on the back there I just need to drill the holes and screw it as said. But we'll just pop the shell on and have a look at what it looks like. It looks okay perspective wise, size wise in here, but we'll have a look um, and pop the shell on and see what we think. Right, so that's all that done. You can see the rear bash bar hanging down beneath the back there. Yeah, I think it would have been cooler if it was a little bit bigger. Should have gone a shade braver, should have kind of shade wider, you know, come out maybe into the 15 mil either side, come back into the five mil. So it's just that little bit more beefy. I think that would have been the way forward. But it's quite cool with that sort of jacking point hanging down below, especially with the fact that that shell has that sort of cutaway. So there we go, one 3D printed kind of rear cage part. I'll put a link in the description to the file for that in case anybody else wants to go. Um, and I might even make a second one at a later date and update this video or do another second video of kind of improvements. And um, the next thing I'm gonna do, I've ordered some red straws. I'm sure you've seen some of the videos of people making um, straw roll cages, but I'm gonna give it a go with a glue gun. So more mods coming. Okay, I hope you, you like that video. I hope it's got you inspired to learn some 3D software and make your own roll cagey bits and fun things for your RC.